Hello and welcome to day two of our thermodynamic snow day videos. In our last video, we talked about the difference between heat and temperature, and we talked about some of the macroscopic properties in thermodynamics. We talked about how when mechanical energy is lost and we gain thermal energy, that heat is transferred into a substance and that changes the temperature of that substance. What we're going to talk about today is another macroscopic property. We're going to talk about thermal expansion. Specifically, we're going to talk about why things expand when they're heated or contract when they're cooled, and we're going to learn the formulas for linear and volume expansion, and you need to be able to solve problems with those equations. Now, first, let's talk about why things expand. Remember, yesterday when we talked about what temperature was, temperature is a measure of the kinetic energy of the molecule. So the more uh, kinetic energy that molecules have, the faster they're moving, right? Kinetic energy, one half mass times the velocity squared. So the more they're moving, the more kinetic energy they have, the faster they're moving, then therefore the higher temperature they have. So as we increase the temperature of an object, as we transfer heat into the object and temperature goes up, these molecules are moving faster and faster and faster, and they push out farther and farther and farther. So the more molecules increase in temperature, the more kinetic energy they have, and therefore, uh, because they're moving, they tend to uh, cause expansion of the material. Now, if we look at a piece of metal, for example, let's say maybe this is a brass rod, and we increase the temperature of that, that brass rod, we will see that the length of that rod will increase. Now, there are several things that affect how much the rod expands. The first thing is how much the temperature changes. The more we change the temperature, the more the kinetic energy increases and the more the rod will expand. The original length will also affect it, right? The more length I have originally, the more material I have, the more molecules I have, the more molecules that are moving faster. And so the more material I start with, the more my material will increase in length. Also, uh, the coefficient of thermal expansion, that is the property of the material. It's a constant, uh, just like a specific heat is a constant. We could look it up in a physics book or in a book of constants, or you could Google it. Um, so each material has its own uh, coefficient of thermal expansion. They all expand to a different degree. If we look at this mathematically, um, if we take a material like a brass rod and we um, add some energy to it, some thermal energy, uh, so that its temperature changes, uh, we will find out that it actually has a measurable change in length. For linear expansion, uh, our equation is that this change in length is equal to the coefficient of linear expansion. Uh, it's symbolized by an alpha, and like I said, that's something that you can look up or you'd be given in a problem times the original length of the material, how much material you started with, times the change in temperature. So all of these things are directly related to the increase in the length. Now, by taking alpha, multiplying by the original length, and the change in temperature, you will get the delta L, or how much the length increased by. Of course, if you want the final length, right, delta L, anytime it's a delta, right, it's final minus initial, and so if this is our L final minus L initial, we could rearrange this equation um, for L final, simplify it, and get that L final uh, is equal to the initial length, so that's supposed to be an F, initial length times the quantity 1 plus alpha delta T. Now I will tell you this is the equation I remember, right, because you can do math and rearrange this to get to here if you're looking for final length. Or, calculate what your delta L is, and then if this is a heating, right, you would add that to your original length. Um, if it was a cooling, then you would subtract it. Let's look at some common applications of thermal expansion. The first is thermometers. Right? Thermometers are something that we use quite frequently uh, in lab, and a thermometer actually works by the property of thermal expansion. When the temperature of a substance increases, the liquid in this thermometer expands and it is increasing in temperature. So you can read that off our little temperature scale. 
Um, bimetallic strips, we're actually going to look at a bimetallic strip a little later. Uh, bimetallic strips are in your thermostats in your house. And they work off the fact that two materials are bound together that have different coefficients of linear expansion. So as the temperature changes, the rate of change of one of these materials is greater than the other, and that will trigger your thermostat on or off. Um, if you cook uh, meat or candy, uh, you might have seen one of these in your house. Uh, this is an oven thermometer. Again, all of these work by the property of thermal expansion. Another application is in manufacturing um, with what's called shrink fitting or interference fits. Uh, what we can do is we can take a pipe and if we need to put some sort of sleeve on it, um, if we start off with a sleeve that has a smaller diameter and we heat it up and we put it on that pipe, when they both come to the same temperature, this will be stuck really tight um, onto the pipe. So this is another property used very much in manufacturing called shrink fitting. Now we're going to actually do a calculation here um, with this example. We're going to start with this brass sleeve right here. It's like a ring. I have a little picture down here. And we want it to be shrink fit over this pipe here. Now um, the diameter of this shaft here is 3.212 centimeters when it is at zero degrees Celsius and the diameter of the sleeve, which we want to put over it, is less than that, 3.196 centimeters, again, at zero degrees Celsius. What I want to know is what temperature do we need to heat this so that we can just fit it over that shaft? All right, so in order to calculate this, right, here's our equation, uh, delta L is equal to alpha, the coefficient of linear expansion, times the original length, uh, times that change in temperature. Now, our delta L, what we're looking for is how much do we need to increase the sleeve by in order that we can just get it over the shaft. Now, we want to just get it over the shaft because if we have to make it like a lot bigger in order to fit it over, it's going to require a lot more energy input, which is costly. So what we want to do is we want to hit this, uh, heat the sleeve so that the increase in temperature makes it just fit over the shaft. So we're going to say that our final length, the final diameter of our sleeve, needs to be the diameter of the shaft itself at zero degrees Celsius. So when I write this equation, I'm going to say that the final uh, length that I need is going to be the original diameter of the shaft itself, the initial, right, delta L is final minus initial. The initial, of course, is our initial diameter or length of our sleeve. All right, that's equal to the coefficient of linear expansion, which we're given as 19 times 10 to the negative 6. Uh, that is over degrees Celsius. Uh, times our original length, which is that original diameter there. Uh, times our change in temperature. And again, that's final minus temperature initial. What we're solving for here right, is what is our final temperature. All right, so let's plug some numbers in here. Uh, D, our final length that we want, and we're going to leave these in centimeters um, since we don't have to worry about units so much uh, with our constant. So our final D, 3.212 minus the initial diameter, which is 3.196. That is equal to the coefficient of linear expansion, 19 times 10 to the negative 6, times the initial diameter, uh, which we said was 3.196. Uh, times the final temperature, which is what we're trying to find, uh, minus the initial temperature, which is zero degrees. All right, so we're going to rearrange this and solve for final temperature. Uh, so T final is the difference between 3.212, uh, what we want our final length to be, minus our initial length, 3.196, all divided by our coefficient of linear expansion, 19 times 10 to the negative 6 times our original diameter. All right, so if we plug these into our calculator, we will find out that our final temperature is 263 degrees Celsius. So quite hot, right? Coefficient
coefficients of linear expansion are very small. So in order to get an appreciable change in our length, we need to transfer a lot of energy into our materials and increase the temperature by a significant amount. All right, let me ask you a couple of questions. Uh, the first actually um, frequently happens, right? You get a jar, and this is, happens to be a jar of pickles, but any glass jar with a metal lid, and you have it at home, and you're trying to open it, and you're like, ooh, 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 right? Very difficult to open. Um, now, if we think about, if we actually looked up the coefficients of expansion, linear expansion for glass and metal, we find out the glass jar has a coefficient of expansion of 3 times 10 to the negative 6. Uh, these happen to be in Kelvin. Um, it uh, has a metal lid. The lid itself has a coefficient that's much higher, 16 times 10 to the negative 6. six. If you heat them in hot water, what will happen? Will it be easier to open or will it be harder to open? Well, this is something for you to try at home. Next time you have a lid that's stuck, instead of like banging on it, actually run the lid under hot water because what you'll find out, right, if the lid has a higher coefficient of uh, linear expansion and you increase its temperature, it will make it easier to open. So I did that quite a bit over Christmas break um, between pickle jars and jars of roasted peppers. And Stuff. So metal expands more, so if you want to uh, remove that lid, just increase its temperature. How about this one? A uh, bimetallic strip, and I actually have, and I have a bimetallic strip here. Uh, this is brass on, I think, steel. Um, I have metal G on top, and uh, metal H here is on the bottom, and it happens to be attached to a wall um, as shown in this diagram. Now the coefficient of linear expansion for G, which will be our brass, is greater than that of H, which we'll say is our steel. If we heat this strip, what will happen? Will this strip curve upward? Will it curve downward? Uh, will it remain horizontal but the whole thing will get longer? Or does it bend in the middle? Well, let's do this. Uh, like I said, I have a bimetallic strip here, um, and it is made out of brass on top. So this will be 19 times 10 to the negative 6 uh, over degree C. And my steel, I believe this is steel, is 11 times 10 to the negative 6. All right, so here the expansion of brass is greater than that of steel. All right, so. metallic strip in this. Again, it's oriented like this so that the brass is on top. And you can see that, in fact, it curved downward. So if you said that it would curve downward, you were correct. expand linearly, right? When the molecules are moving, they're moving in all directions. So while we've just looked at how long length increases, really the whole volume of the object is increasing. So we're going to now look at volume expansion. Um, when a material expands, uh, as if it's being uniformly heated, it will expand in all directions. Now, this is our equation for volume expansion. It looks very much like the equation for linear expansion. Uh, the change in the volume, so final minus initial, the change in the volume is equal to beta, which is the coefficient of volume expansion, times the initial volume times the change in temperature. Now, interestingly enough, the coefficient of volume expansion is just three times the coefficient of linear expansion. That should make sense, right? Because we're expanding in all three dimensions. So from linear, just multiply by 3, and you'll get the coefficient of volume expansion. 
So the change in volume is the coefficient of volume expansion, which is three times the linear expansion, times the original volume times the change in temperature. All right, we are going to do one problem on volume expansion. Uh, this one is a little more difficult. Um, and you fill your car, right? Your car has a gas tank which contains a certain volume of gas. You fill it to the brim with 45 liters of gas at 10 degrees Celsius. It must be a little chilly outside. Immediately afterward, how chilly is it outside right now, uh, here in St. Louis, Immediately afterward, you park the vehicle in the sun where the temperature is 35 degrees. All right, so sitting in the sun, your car is warming up. Everything in your car is warming up. So the gas tank's expanding. The gas is expanding. And if we look at our coefficients of expansion, we can see that the coefficient of volume expansion for the gas is actually greater, 9.6 times 10 to the negative fourth, uh, greater than that of steel, which is 3.3 times 10 to the negative fifth, which means that the gas itself is going to expand greater at a larger rate than our steel tank, which is why if we leave the cap off, we're going to lose some of it, and why you don't want to fill the gas all the way to the rim. Um, It'll create a little bit of pressure in the gas tank. Um, so I want to know how much gas do we lose because of this expansion. Well, remember now, both things are expanding, right? Both things have a coefficient of expansion. Things expand when they're heated. And so what we're looking for here is the difference between how much this gas tank, or how much this gas expands and how much the steel expands. So the difference between that is going to tell us how much of our gas is overflowing, what our volume is. So our overflow is the difference between how much the gas tank increases in volume minus how much the steel um, gas tank itself expands. All right, so delta V is what we're trying to find here. The change in volume of gas, remember that our equation for um, volume expansion is delta V is beta times the original volume times the change in temperature. All right, so we're just going to plug this equation in for both of our um, gas and our tank. So delta V for gas would be the coefficient of volume expansion for the gas times the initial volume of the gas times the change in temperature of the gas. And from that, we're going to subtract the uh, coefficient of linear expansion, or sorry, volume expansion for the steel times the original volume of the steel times the change in temperature of the steel. Now, if we fill the tank to the brim with 45 liters, that means our initial volume of gas and steel are the same. And we are starting out with an uh, initial temperature of 10 degrees Celsius. Our final temperature is 35. So we can actually pull those things out of our equation because those are the same. So that's going to leave us with delta V is the volume of gas and the volume of steel, which is the same. So we'll say our initial volume. Uh, times our change in temperature, which is the same for both. And we're going to multiply that by the quantity uh, volume expansion for gas minus the coefficient of the volume expansion for steel. So we simplify that. That'll make our calculations a little easier. All right, so our initial volume is 45. Our change in temperature, uh, we end up at 35, but we started at 10. And we're going to take that 25 times 45, and we are going to multiply it by the quantity of the difference, 9.6 times 10 to the negative fourth minus 3.3 times 10 to the negative fifth. All right, so 9.6 times 10 to the negative fourth minus 3.3 times 10 to the negative fifth. Multiply that by the quantity of uh, whatever 45 times 25 is, 
And when you solve this, you should find out that you lose just over a liter of gas. So don't fill your tank up to the brim and then put it out in the hot sun. Last thing I want to talk about in this video clip is the fact that water is weird. And water is weird, but that's a good thing. Um, dense, most things, right, expand as they're heated and contract as they're cooled. So typically as something is cooled, right, its volume goes down, mass doesn't change, right, so that means its density would go up. But water is different. Now, density of water does increase, like everything else increases as it cools, but only till you get to four degrees. In fact, at four degrees, the density of the water is the highest. Maximum density of water is 1,000 kilogram per meter cubed, and that's at four degrees Celsius. But then when we get to this magic four degrees Celsius, in fact, as it cools, it doesn't contract anymore. In fact, it expands. So water is weird. As we cool water further past four degrees to freezing, it actually expands. And so in fact, the density of ice is actually less than water, and therefore ice floats, right? That's a good thing. Um, if it didn't float, it would sink and squish the fish uh, that were in you know, lakes and rivers or whatever else is freezing that has animals in it. Um, so it's a good thing that water is weird, but it's very different from, most, from every other material, which as it cools, shrinks. Water shrinks, and then it expands. But, due to the ice crystals and the way they set up their crystal structure. So that's a good thing to know. Well, thank you for listening to our second snow lecture on thermal expansion. Um, if you have any questions, drop me an email.